Hey everyone, so five days ago I created a Facebook page called Jamie's Journey and I could have never imagined what would happen next. So many of you guys have liked my page. So I just checked Jamie's Journey Facebook page and there is now 114 people that have liked my page. That's like mind blowing to me guys, seriously like that's 114 people that now know about metrophanos and bladder extrophy and I've always shared my story since I can really remember because I mean I can't even count that high it to how many times that I've had to explain to doctors and nurses this is what I'm born with and this is how you treat it and this is how you change the medical supplies and what you need to do and I've educated so many people over the last 23 years, but I've never thought about till recently sharing it online. And I I guess part of that is because I'm kind of like worried about I have had so much negative feedback in my life. When I was in like 6th and 7th grade, I actually shared my story with my friends and classmates that have known me since I was like in elementary school since I started and I can remember just having like the most rudest comments so I was expecting that's why like I've put over and over and over that if you don't have nothing nice to say about my videos or photos that I'm posting just don't even go to my page. Anyways, like I said time and time again, any negative feedback will be deleted. And because I want this to be a positive thing. Now, some of it is very raw and truth. And I mean, doctors don't see us every single day. And doctors can only give you so much information. In these videos, I will sooner or later talk about um, being picked on. Sure, I've shared my story with so many people throughout, you know, how many years of being in the hospital and going to different schools and making new friends and old friends and, you know, just educating people and, you know, hoping that they would accept me for who I am, you know, and what's in my heart. And, you know, like I said, I have been rejected. I have been, you know, bullied and... I didn't know growing up if anybody would love me for me and that's really sad like looking back now and thinking about that but it is a lot to deal with and you know every single day my husband has to see me you know in pain to the sense of I just got really bad nerve damage now from having so many back surgeries but if I can help one person and you know make them feel like they're not alone then all this is worth it guys and like I said thank you so much for sharing my story and my video blogs with your friends and family because just in the last five days since I created Facebook page Jamie's journey so many people have come forward and said that they now feel like they can tell others and their friends about their birth effects and you know there's no reason that you should feel ashamed of your birth effects I'm not gonna say that I'm not worried about negative feedback I mean come on nobody wants to hear you know negative feedback but I am really really happy to say that as of five days now I have not had one single comment being negative and I am like completely shocked because I just I automatically like my mind just goes to somebody's gonna say something and I'm gonna say something wrong and then someone's gonna correct me but like I've said all along this is my story every birth effect that somebody has is slightly different I mean you could have spina bifida or bladder extrophy but the cases be completely different and you know, I just, this is my story, and hopefully along the way, we can raise awareness together. And so a lot of us know that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, 
But what a lot of us don't know is that October is also Spina Bifida Awareness Month. And because I was born with Spina Bifida, I'd like to share with you a little bit of what Spina Bifida is and give you a little bit of an idea of what it's like to live every day with this condition. So Spina Bifida is a rare birth defect, but yet it's actually the most common disabling birth defect in the United States. It can happen to both boys and girls. And when you think of spina bifida, you think of automatically somebody being in a wheelchair. But that's not always the case. I have spina bifida, and I am actually pretty lucky. I don't have to have a shunt that drains the fluid in my brain. And I also have never been in a wheelchair. Now, I, when I was born, I did have to have uh, leg braces, and after years and years of physical therapy, I am now able to walk without any leg braces for support, and I used to actually have a leg brace that I would wear at night to help strengthen my legs as well, but I no longer have to use that either. So I'm pretty lucky on that end of that I have overcame a lot of the physical um, problems dealing with spina bifida, but I've actually had to deal with a lot more since I've become an adult. And with spina bifida, there's this condition called telecord, and everybody with spina bifida can have it. And it, it happens more commonly when you have growth spurts and when I was younger I had to have growth hormone shots because the doctor said I would never reach even four feet tall. I just was not born with the right chemicals in my body to make me grow. So I took the doctor's advice and started growth hormone shots which made me grow about a foot taller and maybe a year or two I'd say. And so it, it really did work, but the side effect of that was that I grew so fast and my body just couldn't handle it and it caused me to almost go paralyzed. And what Telecord does is if you can kind of picture your muscle in your spinal cord, it kind of wraps around your spinal cord and it kind of like strangles your your spine and so you start losing like sensation from your waist down and your feet go numb and it's kind of like when your feet fall asleep to give you like a better idea of, of what I'm talking about and I started having these symptoms about 11 years old but it started getting really bad when I was about 13 and so when I was 13 years old I had to have surgery and by then I had already moved to North Carolina where I was originally from Chicago and had all my doctors in Chicago lined up and everybody had known me since I was born and because that was such a difficult case and so many birth defects I had like a team of doctors and this team of doctors knew each other and knew my case and and it was really really great and that's what happens with a lot of kids born with multiple birth defects is you kind of have like a team of doctors and so like when something goes wrong like let's say I had bladder surgery my back doctor would know okay well you're having surgery and and this is what you need to do so that you don't hurt your back on the operating table so they kind of like always talked about stuff before I would have the surgery so anyways as before I had that particular surgery which honestly I don't remember what the surgery was for I it couldn't have been that important if I can't remember it but I remember walking um, down the hallways and where the registration room was before you get to the operating rooms and I can remember seeing my spine with a doctor in the hallway and running up to him and telling him you know, my, my legs have been like really numb and tingling and you know, I don't I don't really know if I have to the cord, but 
I'm in town this week because of surgery. Can you please, you know, look into it? And can I come to your office so you can, you know, see my legs and see if they're working like they should be? Anyways, he pretty much thought the same thing as I did, that I had tethered cord. And because my case is so difficult and so well known with those doctors in particular, my team of doctors, I mean, he jumped on the case and was like, let me see you tomorrow in my office and we'll do an MRI and figure out what's going on. So I did that and he, he told me exactly what it was. It was telecord. And he had me meet with my back doctor that I had when I was born, Dr. David McClone, which is actually one of the best well-known doctors in this country for spina bifida. And he was like the top of the top and only did surgery like once in a blue moon at that time. and and heard that I was like having issues and came into the office just for me and said that he would be perform the surgery on me. And so I took him like aside and asked him, you know, what is telecord? I mean, at this point I'm 13 years old. I've heard of it, but I've never had to deal with it. And he took me aside as well and said, look, I don't know how to break this to you. You've, you've been walking your entire life. You've beat the odds. You don't have a shunt. You're walking without braces. But we need to get this fixed. You have tether cord and it's bad. Like, it's really bad. And I can remember him putting his arm or his hand on my shoulder and saying, okay, well, if you really want the truth, here it is. You have two weeks to walk. And if you don't get in here within the next two weeks, you're going to go paralyzed. And in that moment, my whole world, it felt like it was coming down around me. Everything that I worked for, everything, all the physical therapy hours, and, you know, I hate physical therapy. Like, I, I cannot stand to do physical therapy because I had to do it for so many years and I had to do stuff that I did not want to do because like with spinal bifida you have to stretch your muscles and you got to think like your muscles don't want to stretch anyways basically I'm 23 now and I've had to deal with tether cord for the last 10 years and tether cord is very it's a difficult surgery like having spina bifida is not easy but when you have tether cord like I said the muscle kind of wraps around like your spinal cord and you start to lose like circulation and it just it feels like your foot's always asleep but it's actually like your whole body I've had probably like six tether cord surgeries in the last 10 years I mean that's I'm, I'm pretty sure about six but I've had a lot of nerve damage because you got to think every time that they go in the operating room and cut your nerves and open up your back and stuff you're they have to like carefully cut each and every nerve around your spinal cord and they have to be really really careful well they don't know until you're out of surgery whether or not they cut too many nerves or not enough and whether or not the surgery was successful and there's always that chance that you could wake up out of surgery and you won't be able to move your legs and just like that fact has always scared me so I guess every day that I do wake up and am able to move my legs I am ten times more grateful because I've been faced with the possibility of going paralyzed. Now, like I said, telecord mostly occurs between the ages of 6 and 11 because you're growing the most then. But I've heard it actually can happen like every 7 years until you're 21. Now that's what I was told.
Whether that's true or not, you you could find out. I mean, that's just what I was told. But I'm now 23, so I'm pretty much done growing. And the damage that has been done hopefully won't get any worse. But I do live every day with nerve damage. And so, like, my legs twitch at times. And it is, like, really, really painful. But, you know, I still count my blessings just because of the fact that I know that I was one of the lucky ones that was able to walk. And if it ever comes down to me being paralyzed, I had 23 years that I was able to walk. When some of my friends that have spina bifida have never been able to walk. So, like I said, I am, I am grateful and you got to look at life like that. And for those of you that can walk every day and, you know, kind of kind of think about that because there's a lot of us that you know you shouldn't take life for granted you don't know if tomorrow you're gonna be here or not and walking is something that is so simple but when it's taken away from you 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 start to think about life differently and yeah so never take your life for granted I guess is the lesson learned here so a lot of you guys have asked me, is there a cure for spine bifida or tether cord? And there ain't. There's there's no cure at this time. And they don't really know what causes it. There's different people think that it's the environment or birth control or, you know, medication, side effects, uh, while you're pregnant. I don't I don't really know which one to really believe more or less. But the way I see things is nobody said specifically this is why you were born with so many problems and what good is it really gonna do to blame a medication or you know anything along those lines or the environment because you ha you now have a child born with these birth defects you need to now focus more on giving this child the most normal life that you can give them so I've never really focused on what caused any of my problems. So now I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I've been receiving from multiple people. A lot of you guys have also asked me, what does spina bifida stand for? Spina bifida is Latin for split spine. I've seen a lot of people not want to share their story with me because they feel ashamed and you shouldn't feel ashamed I mean yeah your friends don't have it that you go to school with but you're still you I mean God gave you these problems because he felt like you could handle it and even for me there's some days that I question <laughs> am I able to handle this much but I truly do believe that God gives you only as much as he believes that you can handle and at times it may seem more than you can handle but you just gotta have some faith so the reason that I'm wanting to do these video blogs and why I created Jamie's Journey's Facebook page is just to help others and that's that's just my main goal so a lot of people with spina bifida or multiple birth defects do have some allergic reactions such as latex allergies and a lot of people with spina bifida cannot be around like balloons and um, just latex in general so that's that's one thing definitely to always watch out for with spina bifida I so for those of you that are watching my video and have any questions or comments about my birth effects or maybe what it's like to have spina bifida or maybe you have questions about my other videos that I've made, you can write me a comment or message on the Facebook site Jamie's Journey and you know feel free to like my page and until my next video, 
I hope that I helped you guys understand a little bit more about Spinebuff and what life is really like with it. Until then, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.